Hello, and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana. I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the latest and greatest updates to Adobe Photoshop for the iPad. Since our last update video, there have been a lot of feature updates. A lot of these features are ones that you guys have let me comments about, have been wondering about and hoping to see in the program. So this video should be really exciting. Without further ado, grab your iPad, grab your Apple Pencil, and let's take a look at these updates. Here, I'm starting with a stock photo. This is a free stock photo from Adobe Stock that you can download yourself. The link is in the description box below. So for this first update, Pretty basic stuff, but highly requested and great to see in the iPad version of Photoshop. We're talking about drop shadow and stroke effects. So let's take a look. So to this nice spring floral photo, let's say I wanna add some text. So I'm gonna go to my text tool here and I'm just gonna draw my text box out. They always give you some nice default text to start. Add some text here. Spring has sprung. You also have your layer properties panel here when your text opens. Really nice and easy to increase that text size. Just gonna adjust my line spacing a little bit and hit done. So I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, you know, it's kind of hard for me to read this text over these florals here. So this would be a great opportunity to add a drop shadow and a stroke. We can open up our layer properties panel, which is this third icon on the right. And we are going to add a layer effect. This is just like a little drop down toggle. You open that up and you can go add layer effect. Then you'll see the options for stroke and drop shadow. So let's add a stroke first. So by default, it's got black, but you can also eye drop and move your eyedropper around your image to sort of get colors from your picture that you might feel match better the tone of your photo or whatever effect you're trying to do. So I'm just adjusting the size of my stroke using this slider here. You can also tap that window and manually enter in your stroke size if you'd like. You'll also notice that you can adjust the positioning. So this is set to inside. I could have this on the outside, which you can see opens things up and gives a different effect and also centering it. So you have those different options like you have on the desktop program. So I really like the way outside looks. So I'm gonna keep there and I'm not gonna adjust my blend mode, although you do have the option to do so if you'd like. So there, I've got my stroke added to my text. I think it looks great. So now let's add a drop shadow as well. To add another effect, we're just gonna hit that plus sign icon and we're gonna select drop shadow. So here you'll see a lot of those same features as you recognize probably from the Photoshop desktop program. You can adjust the size, the spread, the distance, and just adjust them using the handy sliders. Super easy when you're using the Apple Pencil. You can add a little bit of noise for a little bit more grain and texture, but it's really easy, really intuitive to add these effects. And I really like the way that that text is now popping against my picture. Additionally, if you select the three dot icon next to any of the effects that you've added, you can hide them temporarily and toggle them on and off. You can also reset them. So just know that you do have that fine tuned control. You don't always have to have it enabled or on. And once you've applied effects to a layer, you'll notice that this FX icon will be in the bottom right hand corner of that layer where effects have been applied. Next, we're going to be looking at double tap action features. Now this is going to be if you have a second generation Apple Pencil. So this is the, like the one that I have here, the part that connects to the top of your iPad magnetically also has some cool additional features that are enabled by touch in a lot of your digital art programs. To activate the double tap features on your second generation Apple Pencil in Adobe Photoshop for iPad, you can just go to your settings, you go to input, and then under the Apple Pencil ribbon menu, you just open that up and then you just assign whatever action it is that you want a double tap against your pencil to activate. For example, I have mine set to zoom to fit. So 
Let's say I zoomed into this image previously to get into some detail work, and now I just want to zoom out. I can double tap and it'll zoom all the way out to fit the screen size of my iPad. As you could see, there's a lot of different options. You could do show color picker, switch to eraser, switch to last tool, which might be really interesting and good for your workflow, as well as undo. Also, if none of these features are particularly appealing to you or you don't really think that they fit with your workflow, you could also just hit no action. This will help you prevent from accidentally enabling something that you didn't really intend to do. Next, things are gonna get interesting. Let's look at the liquify filter effects that are now in Adobe Photoshop for iPad. So like I mentioned, we now have liquify effects. So to show you these, I'm just gonna duplicate my photo first, just so I can keep it intact before I start manipulating it. In order to access these filter effects, we're going to go to this icon down here that kind of looks like a lightning bolt. This is our filters and adjustments panel. And then the second option, we've got liquify. So as you can see, we've got nine different options for how to manipulate, distort, and change this photo. They get pretty interesting and increasingly interesting as you sort of experiment with them. So let's take a look at warp. At the top here, and you can also just move this menu around if you see that bar at the top, hot tip, that means you can move your menu wherever you want on your screen. But this will just adjust our brush size. So I've got warp selected here, so I'm just gonna start warping things. And as you can see, something already sort of shifted and moved. Um, <laughs> yeah, things, things get weird um, when you start liquefying stuff. And then you have tools like Reconstruct, which help you sort of undo <laughs> the weirdness that you were doing. Move your, your brush around and just sort of reconstruct your image. Then we've got smooth. So much like the reconstruct tool, you can see the effects of this more when there's already been an effect applied. Then we've got twirl right and twirl left. So as its name sounds, it's gonna start twirling things to the right, twisting things up. And like I said, things get weird, they get trippy. <laughs> when you use the liquify tools, but that's why they're so fun. Um, you'll also see all of these effects in Adobe Fresco as well if you use that on your iPad. Then we've got two of my favorites, Pucker and Bloat. So it sort of sucks everything in and just sort of squeezes it around a central point. Then you've got Bloat, much to its name. It starts to expand things around a central point. Interesting. And then you've got push left and push right. Much like it sounds, it pushes things left <laughs> or it pushes things right. Now, I've done a lot to this photo. Up here in the right-hand corner, we've got this sort of like dividing line looking icon. If you click this, you can just kind of see the before and after. So that's kind of a cool thing. And then also you have this arrow it sort of looks like it's leaping backwards that's your reset to default arrow so if you want to start from scratch where you began you hit that arrow um, and then if you ever regret anything in one step in either direction either an undo or a redo you have your arrows here for that and that's the liquify filter effects pretty cool pretty crazy like i said but a fun way to manipulate your images and start experimenting with stuff. Now let's take a look at the highly anticipated Generative Fill and Generative Expand tools. These updates to Adobe Photoshop for iPad represent updates 5.3 and 5.4. Um, so these are relatively newer updates to the program and it's really exciting to see them come. So let's take a look at how we can take advantage of those features. Starting with generative fill. All right, so for this, I'm just gonna toggle off my text and I'm going to use my marquee rectangle tool. And now I'm going to go to the bottom left-hand corner here and go to generative fill. This is going to prompt me to add in 
a prompt that will give the program an idea of what I want to see in this space that I've selected. So let me see, this is a nice floral spring photo. It's a beautiful blue sky, but let's see if it can add some fluffy white clouds for me to this photo. So once I have my prompt, I just hit generate and let the program work its magic. First, we've got this little icon that shows that this is a generative layer, it sort of has like magic sparkles um, of an icon on its left. And then I've got three variations. So I've got this, I've got this, and I've got this. So I don't love this one because it's just one big cloud. <laughs> so, you know, I'm gonna say that that's a bad result. Um, that's a great way to give them uh, feedback on the kinds of things that we're looking for when we're typing in certain prompts. It's actually really helpful for developers who are putting together these amazing uh, features for us um, to get a better sense of what is successful in the program. It's just all based on your own personal preference or, or what have you. But this is, this is generative fill. This is adding to a photo and letting the program do its magic. Now you can also use generative fill to remove things from your photo as well. So let's take a look at that. So here I'm just gonna select my same photo and I'm just gonna put my selection over this floral here. I'm just gonna put remove flower. The cool thing also about the text prompts is that it accepts over a hundred languages. So you don't have to worry about it like not understanding you. So really cool. And successfully, it has removed the flower that I selected and didn't want to see in the photo. Now these other ones, not as successful. I mean, they sort of removed it in its own way and the fact that it doesn't look like the same flower that was there, but it just replaced it with another flower, which isn't what I wanted. And this was the original. so. Um, pretty interesting, but I would say a bad result and bad result. Um, and then I'll just delete these ones that I don't want. Um, so I think that's pretty successful in terms of a removing. Before we take a look at a generative expand, if you're liking the video so far, hit that thumbs up and comment finally if you're liking these updates. All right, let's look at generative expand. So, Similar to Generative Fill, this uses Adobe Firefly technology, but this time this is going to take the information from your image and expand it beyond its current canvas size. So we're gonna do that using the Crop tool. So we're just gonna tap that here. Maybe we only add height to it. And let's add a prompt. I feel like when I'm more descriptive, <laughs> it produces better results. So let's take a look and see how it does with that. Okay, so even if this isn't like, in my opinion, the best result, it's something and it's a start. Um, so I think the more that you experiment with these features, the better your prompts will get, the better results you'll get. And as well, like I said, encouraging you to use those good result, bad results. This is a learning thing, it's a community thing. So get to generative expanding and I hope you get really cool results in the end. Now we're gonna take a look at the remove tool. A little bit ago, we used generative fill to remove this flower down here. So you could also go about that by using the remove tool. To access the remove tool, you're just gonna go over to this little bandage looking icon. This is where your clone tools panel is. You're gonna select remove tool. Now the update to the remove tool is in this little pop-up. You can use it like a brush or a lasso. So that basically just means that you have two options for removing things from your image. At the bottom here, we've got our brush size. We can adjust that. And I can do this one of two ways. I can brush over this flower to remove it. And it'll just sort of show you it's working and presto, it's gone. Or I can do the same effect by simply circling this and removing it. So it works both ways. Convenient, simple, and really quick. You have additional options 
in this three dot icon menu in the bottom left hand corner here. You can choose to sample all of your layers when doing removing. So if I had multiple things in my document, multiple layers that I wanted to be taken into effect when I'm removing things, you can toggle that on. You can use pressure for size. So for example, I apply light pressure or hard pressure. My brush size will get larger or smaller. So you could do that or things will just stay a uniform size no matter how much pressure you apply. And then you have remove after each stroke. So anytime you make a pass and lift your pencil, it will count that as you requesting the program to remove something. Now, if you untoggle this, this simply means that you can do this and maybe I want to remove something over here too. And maybe I want to remove this too. And then once I'm done, I can hit this check mark here and then it can do multiple removals at once, which is super convenient and speeds things up in your workflow as well a bit. Great, super fast and easy way to remove things from your images. This is a destructive way of editing. So like we can see, this is directly on our photo. So keep that in mind, but still a great tool nonetheless. And I really enjoy seeing it in Adobe Photoshop for iPad. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend who's learning Adobe Photoshop for iPad. Let me know of any questions you have in a comment below. And before we go, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. I can't believe it, but we made it here and it's all because of your support. So thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.